because I even remember sitting at that first shop and uh, you look and you're like, you know, as we've invested our heart and our soul into that one shop. Mm. So we would see people, I would see people passing me and let's see the attendant that was there. And I'm like, why is everybody not standing at my shop, you know, <laughs> to yes. come and buy water? Mm. Um, I remember the first day we sold, was it four bottles? Wow. Yeah, and I was like, oh my goodness. So you so get you get so scared. Yeah. So now when it came to customers, when I would get one customer, mm. oh, you value them beyond words. Mm. So now, as I've said, I've saved Turi. So Turi, now I make sure I serve her well, mm -hmm. you know, get her her water quickly mm. then when she calls i end up knowing turi i mm. end up knowing turi has a small baby <laughs> 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 and we need to rush water to her house because she needs it for formula yeah. so <laughs> so now that's how we build that relationship yeah. and then when turi calls you see i say hi turi how mm. are you so turi also feels very valued hello and welcome to yet another episode of the millionaire mind my name is turi Fay. Now, the focus of this show is highlighting women in business, because if we're being honest, our fellow counterparts have had a bit of a head start. So it is only fair if we have a platform for us to at least break even, if not more. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And joining us today, have our guest will introduce herself and what she does, because if I do it, I will not be doing enough justice for, <laughs> for everything that she does. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you very much for mm. coming to our show. Yes, thank you so much, Turi. It's such a pleasure oh, to awesome. be here. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So please introduce yourself mm. and what you do okay. and do not leave out anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. Mm -hmm. Okay, my name is uh, Lucy Wanjikongatia. Mm -hmm. um, I've born four children, but mm. a mother of many. Mm. Um, uh, I've been an entrepreneur from 2013. Mm -hmm. Uh, my background is in, uh, I did a degree in actuarial science, and uh, so a bit of my working background is in insurance and banks. Mm. So I uh, quit my job in order to go into some of the interests that I had at the time, yeah. which was uh, export of fresh produce and uh, macadamia nuts and things mm. like that. Uh, so that's how I started. But uh, currently, um, we also have a water brand, mm -hmm. uh, it's called Urban Waters. Mm -hmm. I'm a co-founder of that business and also I also run a business called Afri Toys Limited, yeah. Toys for Children. Awesome. Yes. So um, what exactly um, triggered mm. the move from working corporate, you mm. know, to having um, a salaried mm. income where mm. you have, at the end of the month, you know, I'm going to get some money, mm. to now jumping headfirst into entrepreneurship, which mm. is a bit, you know, mm. risque and mm. you're not quite sure mm. of your returns. Mm. What exactly prompted mm. that kind of response? Well, um, I think I was coming from, I used to work at Chase Bank, mm. and at the time I used to, let me say, leave early and uh, come back home late. At the time, uh, my daughter Ashley was about two years, mm. so I used to feel that I, I'm not spending enough time with her, and I'd feel like I've gone a week without seeing her. Mm. Then I was also e uh, reading some, let me call them dangerous books, like mm. uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Cashflow Quadrant, mm. uh, Millionaire Next Door. Mm -hmm. So they were, let me say, messing up with my mind of, you need to have your own business and yeah. go after your own dreams and mm. establish your own things. So that's actually what made me... Uh, uh, leave employment mm -hmm. uh, but it was uh, not easy because as you said uh, you're used to us to having a salary and then I went I, I left employment with very minimal savings yeah so I went through the the curve yes but uh, I'm grateful that I did however tough mm -hmm. it was yeah yeah so um what exactly mm. um how how exactly did you do it because mm. you know it's not an overnight decision mm. it's not you waking up and saying um mm. i quit i'm just going to start f selling fresh produce <laughs> <laughs> you know, it really doesn't yeah. make sense um mm. for 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 most of us mm. so um how exactly did you identify that this mm. is a sector mm. that actually requires me to mm. go um to provide this service mm. okay i think uh I'm an only child to a single mom oh. uh, who passed away uh, uh, in 2005. Uh? Mm -hmm. So I think she was in the Ministry of Tourism. Mm. So she used to travel a lot. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I also developed the interest from there. Mm. Uh, she used to travel and uh, she also had started a small company for export of avocados. Mm -hmm. So I think it also came a bit from that. Mm. So I also, um, I wanted to have my own products to sell that's that's one of my passions mm -hmm. to make my own products or to just have products to sell mm -hmm. i 
I have, I don't know how else to put it. I like seeing something entering here and coming out different. Mm. Yes, so I, I like making products. Mm. So that's that's how I, I and I and I felt I needed to explore that part of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. And what is the name of the company? Sorry. Oh, now um, we it's called Country Foods Limited. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the Urban Waters brand is under Country Foods Limited. Mm. Uh, yeah. And okay. Yeah. So tell us more mm. about you know mm. from you starting with now fresh produce mm. to to you now transitioning into other businesses. Mm. You've now started water, mm. and f there are other businesses that mm. uh, followed after that. Mm. So um, well, I we started with fresh fresh produce. Mm -hmm. um, so my husband and I, um, at the time, uh, we were now exploring uh, w uh, now the options, yes, the fresh produce, mm -hmm. and we stumbled onto macadamia nuts mm -hmm. uh, because it, it was more, we, we decided that it was less risky mm -hmm. to start with. Mm -hmm. And for macadamia nuts, we are only allowed to export uh, processed uh, macadamia nuts. And uh, we needed uh, the factories that they come from have to be certified, like ISO certified, HACCP certified. So at the time I entered as a broker. Mm -hmm. So we were able to export uh, a few containers and I was uh, getting my cut in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I did that a uh, bit, we did that for about three years. Um, after which now we decided as a family because our, our, um, our, our our family was growing mm. we needed a more consistent income yeah. because um at the time it was very uh, seasonal mm. so that's when we started exploring other business opportunities so it was more or less uh, out of necessity yeah. <laughs> as well so uh we thought about uh, many things so my husband also came and uh, was thinking about the water business mm -hmm. and at first i was not uh, very on board mm. uh, because i felt that uh, there were many people who were opening exactly. these kind of purification stations mm. so for and for me it's very important for me to be engaged in something that i really believe in and something unique and differentiated in whatever way i have mm. to see that yeah in, i think that's why also i like making my own things because putting my own heart and soul into something mm. Uh, so, uh, so we, we decided on the water business, but for us, uh, we really had to focus on uh, delivery. Mm. Because at the time, we were able to get a space. Our first station was in Langata, mm -hmm. and there was not much space for parking. Mm. So we really needed to do deliveries. Mm -hmm. At the time, within the region, uh, the delivery was happening even on bicycles, mm. you know, and so 20 liters were being put on bicycles, and it was not hygienic, and mm -hmm. so we were feeling we need to up that game. Mm -hmm. So we bought our first border board. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> our first motorbike, maybe after about uh, two months of operation or so. Mm -hmm. uh, before then, and a lot of that time, I was delivering with uh, our, our car yeah. <laughs> at the time. Um, uh, so we got a white box. Uh, uh, yeah. We branded it nicely. Branding is everything. Yeah, it's everything. Mm. Yeah, so you know, we had it done nicely at industrial area, I remember. Mm. So, um, yeah, we started doing deliveries and I think people now and also doing our best, we are very big on quality. Mm. So we decided that's going to be our uh, quality and customer service mm -hmm. and turnaround time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how I was able also to build a lot of customer relationships yeah. and uh, Yes, that's how we started. Urban that was in Water. 2017, yes, Urban yeah. Waters. Where exactly yes. in Langata are you located? Uh, right now we are at uh, Bethel Business Center. Uh, uh, we are, yes, but uh, Ruby's, okay, let me say Ruby's Langata Road, yeah. somewhere near there. Yeah, I've seen, yeah, <laughs> seen, seen you You've seen us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, yes. And now before mm. we get, you know, into the um, mm. water mm. business, mm. Um, now as you're getting into this new business mm. and you're thinking about expansion, mm. obviously at some point you're going to need a bit of help. Mm. So now you factor in um, labor and mm. employing people. Mm. How has that journey been for you, especially... Mm right now in mm. Kenya there's been a debate going on about mm. how Kenyan employees only look out for themselves mm. there's literally no loyalty mm. so how has the um, has the experience been mm. as an employer okay now we we started in 2017 with our first branch mm. uh, we thank God that uh, it, it picked up pretty well so in a few months we knew that we wanted another branch mm. uh, so we went to South B uh, eventually to Parklands, to um, Westlands, and also uh, Kafo Supermarkets gave us the opportunity to start uh, within the, so we have purification stations in about 10 of their locations. Mm. Um, so we we have expanded and we thank God. So you're, t you're talking about uh, 
hiring. Yes, hiring. Um, how how we choose staff. Mm -hmm. um, I can say I'm, I'm a bit instinctive. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we have the CVs. We've also learned a lot. <laughs> yes. Um, there are people who, yes, their CVs read this, but Maisha uh, kwa uh, ground It's very different. <laughs> yes. But uh, we value integrity. <coughs> Uh, integrity is very big for us. Mm -hmm. um, during an interview, I think some of the things I also look for are other qualities um, mm. because I've also found that, especially for us, we're in the technical space. Mm. Uh, so we, n we need, yes, customer service attendance at our shops and also a lot of, um, I mean, uh, at attendance for the machines and everything. Mm. So we, we have come to really uh, respect technical expertise and the polytechnics that are there and, and the the caliber of people that are coming out of there. Mm. We've really come to respect that. Um, so we value integrity, openness, mm. even during an interview. Yeah. Uh, how somebody is carrying out uh, themselves. Uh, I'm also very keen to look at the CVs and even the gaps. Mm. Um, I want to encourage actually women out there. Sometimes you, uh, I've also found that when we are interviewing women, there are many of us women who, when we go into families, for example, you find maybe a woman having to maybe decide to stay home with the children. Yes. And so they get scared of coming back into the job market. It's a bit daunting. Yes, yeah. it is. And they, it ends up, they end up feeling like they are not, I don't know whether to say good enough, or mm. they doubt themselves, or they are scared. And because I things move on quickly yes. and you feel a bit outdated. Yes, you feel outdated. Mm. First, even their CVs, uh, Niza, you know, like mm. five years ago mm. or two years ago. Um, they also, and I want to encourage them because like now for me, when I interview, I like listening to that. Mm. And sometimes as women, we are trying to balance so much out. Mm. And uh, sometimes also we go through difficult times. Mm -hmm. So there, there are times that people don't have that job and or they've been looking for employment for that two years and they maybe not gotten. True. So I'm just encouraging women, do not feel lower mm. or do not feel that, hey, now, you know, or feel like you're less. Mm. Uh, do know that we do hire that yeah. and we do acknowledge and be open and be honest. Because like now for me, as I've said, as an interviewer on the other side mm -hmm. and as an, uh, an owner of the business, because like right now under Urban Waters, we are at about 65 employees. Mm. So we do consider that mm. and it's part of you so just love yourself as you are exactly and and that's what i would encourage women to do awesome that yeah. is very powerful yeah. <laughs> and um it's it's mm. not really easy mm. being in business or mm. being an entrepreneur for mm. all these years mm. yet you have stayed afloat mm. so what gives you the competitive edge what mm. sets you apart mm. from other people because mm. there are a lot of you know mm. our water purification centers mm. there are a lot of people who are exporting and importing mm. fresh produce mm. so what sets you apart from mm. others <sighs> we are very big on quality mm we do not compromise on quality. We also have high standards, especially, and with, we, we are grateful for the opportunities we've gotten to expand. We've also increased our processes and bettered our processes as we've gone along. Mm -hmm. um, so I repeat again, we are very big on quality. That sets us apart. Mm. We also do our best to have like, uh, when, when clients order for water, because they call our different branches mm -hmm. and we deliver water to them, Mm -hmm. uh, we try to deliver as fast as we can. Yeah. Uh, we also have a wide range of the, uh, the motorbikes, mm -hmm. uh, which we use mostly, but now we also have uh, trucks and, uh, and vans and yeah, mm, yeah. So, so that works. Um, we, also, we, vo we also value our customers. Mm. Uh, I think from the Langata branch, uh, one of the things that I, let me see how uh, we established our customer relationships at the beginning mm -hmm. is a client would call us and would tell us we, we want water. So Turi has called us. She lives in, let me say, Dam Estate, House mm -hmm. 192. So we make sure we, we take the details. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so now we take Turi's details. Mm -hmm. So because when we were starting the business, um, because my husband was still employed, mm -hmm. uh, so it was more like a run with this mm. and me I'm still employed you know yes. so, so that we we make ends meet so it was very I was very scared mm. uh, getting clients because I even remember sitting at that first shop and uh, you look and you're like you know us we've 
invested our heart and our soul into that one shop. Mm. So we would see people, I would see people passing me and let's say the attendant that was there. And I'm like, why is everybody not standing at my shop, you know, <laughs> to yes. come and buy water? Mm. Um, I remember the first day we sold, was it four bottles? Wow. Yeah, and I was like, oh my goodness. So you so get you get so scared. Yeah. So now when it came to customers, when I would get one customer, mm. oh, you value them beyond words. Mm. So now, as I've said, I've saved Turi. So Turi, now I make sure I serve her well, mm -hmm. you know, get her her water quickly. Mm. Then when she calls, I end up knowing Turi. I mm. end up knowing Turi has a small baby. <laughs> 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 and we need to rush water to her house because she needs it for formula. Yeah. So, <laughs> so now that's how we build that relationship. Yeah. And then when Turi calls, you see, I say, hi Turi, how mm. are you? So Turi also feels very valued. Exactly. So that's one of the principles that we've we, we started from the beginning and I've tried to maintain mm. also through our other branches. Awesome. Yeah. So and yeah. you know, some th there is you know having a personalized relationship mm. with your clients, mm. uh, but sometimes we have mm. seen cases of where it goes overboard and mm. it now becomes mm. um, a, a lot of spam messages going mm. on. You know, it's one thing for a business to for one thing, I will just mm. remind you. Um, mm. Hi, dear customers. Mm. We're having an offer. We're, mm. we, this is happening mm. to them. Always sending messages <laughs> to you. <now. laughs> How do you draw the line? How do mm. you know um, this is a line I shouldn't cross? Mm. Maybe sending more than three texts in mm. a week is a bit too much. Mm. So now how, how are you able to identify that um, mm. this is too much and this mm. is appropriate? Okay. Now for us actually, we are trying to, in fact we are even in the, in the space of uh, looking for even better systems mm. and trying to improve the ones that we have. Mm. Our communication with clients, we, ha we have to communicate yeah, with we them have to. as best as we can. But as you're saying, we, we manage that also on maybe, we see we don't have of offers all the time. Mm. And also sometimes we also need to send uh, messages on even um, um, even reminding clients of payment, especially mm. for corporates and things like that. So we try to be balanced and mm. we also recognize that for sure. Yeah. Uh, because <laughs> you can, especially when you have client details, you can, you know, mm -hmm. uh, go overboard. So we are trying to manage that, but we still value uh, speaking to clients. Exactly. Yeah. So mm. now what would you say are mm. the challenges you have faced so far mm. as a woman in business? Because mm. the transition from corporate mm. to now you being the entrepreneur mm. um, to now you working with your partner mm. first of all mm. did the dynamic change mm. in your relationship because mm. you got into business together yes uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 different uh, it's different but I think over the years we've come to respect one another mm. we've also come to learn to understand each other's strengths mm. like now uh, I'll tell you my husband is very good with uh, seeking business opportunities um, he's also more of a risk taker than I am mm. and uh, he's very good with project management. Mm -hmm. So he can look at any space and it can be like zero, you mm. know, grass. But, he and but he's, 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 he's a visionary. Mm. So I respect that about him. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I'm more, let me say, hard. Mm. Uh, I'm more, how are we doing with customer service? Um, I've also, um, okay, yeah, how are we doing with customer service? Um, I'm big on quality as well. Uh, and I'm big on systems and processes mm. and managing them from beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, ab I'm able to know that and also hiring and mm -hmm. of stuff. Yeah. And but eventually, if it's funny, um, at first I used to be very, eh, now we're opening a new branch. Okay, yes. do we have the money? Is this the right place? You know, kind of thing. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. But I think after you do it two or three times, mm -hmm. eh, right now I'm usually the one of 20, you know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Why have we will be good, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll be good, and mm -hmm. we've learned how to, to balance that out. But uh, it, it, it takes some time. It yeah. also takes some time, yeah. Okay, mm. but before we get into now the challenges, mm. Um, mm. What, what is now the financial aspect of mm. the business? Because mm. uh, maintaining finances as, you know, one business mm. is difficult mm. enough. Mm. But now you're branching into other businesses. Mm. You're now expanding and mm. having more branches everywhere. Mm. Um, how now do you handle the finances mm. and did your background, mm. educational background, mm. uh, help on that? Mm. Or did you now have to outsource your finances mm. and accounts? Okay. Now, one of the challenges of many business people, I'm sure, and many entrepreneurs is now, okay, 
So you start selling bottles. Mm -hmm. You start making revenue. There is the line between personal finances mm -hmm. and business finances. So that sometimes you go through it because now you're taking from the business mm -hmm. what you're using for school fees, what mm -hmm. you're using for. But eventually as you continue, you start now creating those uh, systems. Now you have to tell yourself, mm -hmm. this is the salary that I'm earning. Mm -hmm. um, this is what I'm going to use for this or this. We've had to also reach a place where now you save for the family mm -hmm. and you also save for the business. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful that actually for, especially from the water business, uh, we've been able to actually grow organically. Mm. Uh, so a lot of the opening of branches is we literally reinvest almost everything back. Mm. Yeah, so, and, I, and, and we are grateful. So far we've been able to do that. Yeah. The good thing with that is that you're not lying to yourselves. Mm. The problem with getting used to a lot of loans and uh, which I, I think for for us we 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 try to <laughs> we are we try to balance that very well. Yeah. Um, the problem with a lot of loans is that you're getting a lot of money. So there's an extent to which sometimes you you're you're not very aware of how are your sales really doing. Mm. You know. So it's good to be able to balance that out, especially at the beginning. Yeah. So now at least when you grow organically, you're reinvesting back in the business. So yes. it, it works out a bit better. Mm -hmm. So definitely at first you start on your own. Actually, my husband also has an accounting background mm -hmm. and also for me. Um, but sometimes... Uh, just because you're an accountant, uh, mean. <laughs> used to be an accountant for a firm, yeah. sometimes you're not the best accountant <laughs> for your business. Uh, yeah, because mm. uh, the dynamics are so different. Mm. Oh, today now, I don't know, you're told that some pumps have blown up, now you have to go and buy pumps, mm. you see. So all that uh, budgeting sometimes will go out the door because on that day, you True. may need to buy pumps, you know. <laughs> you set aside funds yes. for a rainy day and yes. it starts raining. Yes, then it starts raining. Mm. And yes, I want to tell entrepreneurs, it does rain sometimes mm. and it's okay. Yeah. And that's why sometimes <laughs> you save up for it <laughs> and it's okay. Yeah. yeah, it's part of the process. It's just part of the journey. Exactly. Yeah, so, okay. And now for that, now we've also, you now uh, start now getting a, a, first we had an outsourced accountant, mm -hmm. but you now get also now an internal accountant mm. and now you continue with that. Yes. Awesome. Mm. So now back to our previous question. Yes. What would you say are the mm. challenges you've mm. encountered mm. so far mm. and how were you able to overcome them? Mm. Okay, one of the ones that uh, I can say scared us a lot mm -hmm. uh, or rather puts us at that place is the taxation environment right now mm. on water and beverages. Like uh, for us right now, we are doing a 6.5 shillings, 6.4 shillings on excise per liter, mm. which is a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. And it's a bit high, so there's a lot of lobbying. Uh, even Water Bottlers Association, there's a lot of lobbying for that. Mm -hmm. um, we really want them reduced or mm. even scratched, honestly, because water is a basic necessity. It is. And uh, we should be able to be operating in an environment where anybody can afford clean water, mm. safe drinking water. Mm. And we are, we are so many <laughs> out there who want to sell safe drinking water. Mm. We also want to comply. Like now for us, that's why uh, our, our, our prices might be a bit higher mm. than our competitors. Yes. And that's one of the things because we reached a place where we are like, we, just because our competitors are lower mm. does not mean we are going to lower now mm. because we will not be able to absorb. And because some of those taxes, we are also not able to like push them. There are some businesses where people are able to push them mm. back to the customer. Mm. But as we are not able to do that also because water is a necessity. And also the, the environment right now, um, the economic environment, uh, it, it doesn't allow us, so we have to absorb the cost. Mm. Um, so that's the taxation regime I can say is a challenge. Mm. And the, the competition, the, uh, because the ones who actually, there are many who are selling water lower and they are not complying mm. yeah, to, 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 to KRA. Mm. Um, so, yeah, those, those, those are some challenge. of the challenges. Yeah. 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 Okay, so mm. now take us through your experience during COVID because mm. we have to ask. Mm. Um, as a planet, all mm. of us collectively mm. really went through mm. um, different, you know, mm. interesting experiences. Mm. Some people were able to make a lot of money mm. off of the pandemic. Mm. Some people registered astronomical losses. Mm. So how was the experience for mm. you? As for us in water, mm. we actually, 
it was not too bad for us because mm. I think water is a necessity. Mm. But uh, we were, I guess I can say we were understanding uh, with customers. Mm. Definitely the sales went a bit lower. Uh, but I think we were, we were okay, we were able to survive that, uh, that time. Mm. Yes, because you know also everybody was home. Mm. So guys were still ordering water. Mm. Yeah. So, so it's, I it's guess up to delivery people. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, what would you say are the future plans for your business mm. uh, right now? Mm. Where do you see um, mm. your exportation mm. of fresh fruits in mm. five years? Mm. Or where do you see your water mm. company mm. in five years? Okay. Uh, I think I'll start with the water company. Uh, some of the uh, things actually we are coming up with a lot of the strategic planning for the next five years. That's mm -hmm. a bit of what we've been doing from the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. We are looking to uh, blow our own bottles mm. because our cost for, for bottles right now is high. Mm. Uh, so actually we're in communication with uh, some manufacturers and, and seeing what we can do about that. Mm. Um, we are also looking to grow regionally, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually there are one or two business opportunities that we're looking at right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to go to Congo, we'd like to go to Nigeria and replicate uh, a lot of the business model there as well. Mm -hmm. And we have people also on the, on the other side who are lo looking at that. So it's just to roll out and to see when we can be able to do it. Mm -hmm. um, for for water, uh, that's what we are looking at. Yeah. Yes, and just really, we are right now also really strengthening our structures and our systems, mm. and uh, and let me say hiring right. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. that's what we are looking at right that now. That was a very politically correct answer. Yeah. You can really <laughs> tell her background <laughs> because it was very. <laughs> don't call us, we'll call you. <laughs> type of vibe going on <laughs> but now there's this yes. re there's this question i've always wanted to ask you mm. know what mm. the process of mm. water purification is mm. because um mm. we have seen people who have sued mm. companies like yours because mm. of false advertising mm. because uh, people sold themselves as fresh mm. spring mm, water spring water yes straight from mm. the springs <laughs> and the abadea mountains yes. and everything so what exactly mm. goes into the process of mm. water purification okay for us uh, because we have different sites first and foremost when we started mm. definitely uh, some of our the major competitors in the in the market mm. there are some who actually honestly there are one or two actually do the natural springs mm. but uh, for us we have to be honest that uh, we don't but uh, so we, we purify water in different sites mm. yes so there are some yes we are able to purify uh, even uh, borehole water and also um, and also, uh, let me say, city council water. Mm -hmm. But we take them through machines mm. uh, and a lot of UV processing, ultraviolet and uh, reverse osmosis. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that is our process. So does mm. the source affect the taste eventually? Yes, yes it does. Mm. And that's why for me, I'm very big on quality because mm -hmm. of the fact that we process water in different locations mm -hmm. um, means that we are very keen on the, the water and mm. how it tastes mm. and the quality of water. Mm. So we are very, very big on that. So we do a lot of testing uh, yeah. within and also outsourced. Mm. Um, we are also, also when it comes to training mm -hmm. uh, of, of our staff, they know, I mean, to make sure that the UVs are working, to make sure that uh, water is being, you know, dispensed well. Yeah. And uh, we are very big also on, because we do take customer bottles and we refill them. So what is the process mm. and disinfecting and everything. Okay. So that's why we are very big on that. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. And um, uh, we never have enough time mm. on this show, mm. but you had mentioned a mm. toy business. Yes, yes, yes. Um, could you tell us a bit about it yes. very quickly as okay. we are winding up? Okay, Sawa. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a passion for children. Mm. And uh, I've always- Being an only child. Yes, being wow. an only child. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making up. Was it lonely? I'm <laughs> making up. <laughs> was it lonely? No. I grew up in, I don't know whether you know, Nyayo High Rise on Bagathi Bay. Mm. So there were many flats and many children. Yeah. So I can't say I was very lonely. Yeah. Uh, I can't say I was, but I had a very good relationship with my mom and mm. I thank God for our relationship. So anyway, I, I love children. And uh, I think for me, the passion came from the fact that I'm always looking for good quality toys for my kids mm. and wanting to make things and to make things 
authentic. Mm. So that's that's where that passion uh, comes from. Um, so right now, uh, for a while, we've been, especially in the a lot of the production space mm -hmm. of uh, making uh, wooden toys, durable wooden toys for children. Mm. And we've also gone into also the special needs kids mm. and uh, the ki we are understanding the needs that they have and also trying to create uh, toys for them yeah. and learning aids. Mm. So mostly it's, let me call it uh, like uh, boards and they have, let me say the one, two, three, or they have the A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. We're also trying to make them more African. Uh, so we are and, and trying to, to, to help children, help them with their cognitive uh, skills. Mm. We're also trying to help them with their motor skills and uh, to also for them to synthesize uh, some of the CBC competencies that are there, mm. which is critical thinking mm. and uh, innovation. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing. So it's puzzle pieces of one, two, three. They're able to play with that and they're mm -hmm. also able to play with their friends. Mm -hmm. um, we are trying to make even boards uh, that show, for example, different foods like sukumawiki. Uh, and does yeah. the sukumawiki really look or manago, mm -hmm. you know, or the clothes that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to make them authentic or let me say authentically Kenyan and African. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. So that's the space we're in. Wow, yeah. Liz, that is such a diverse portfolio. I you know. know. That's, that's <laughs> 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 you can say yes. that you, you have done yes. pretty much everything. Mm. You have tried mm. things that you wanted to do and mm. just gone after them. And yes, that's, yes, yes. you know, that's very remarkable. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are some of the toys that we are making and the learning is that we're making at Afri Toys. Yeah. This is the clock puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, it helps kids uh, learn time. Mm. And it I mean, it can be shared by a few... Uh, a few kids yeah. uh, from zero to six, but we've seen even seven-year-olds play with the same. Yeah. Uh, what you have is the colored uh, version of the same, yes. still a clock. Mm -hmm. um, it teaches kids uh, shapes mm -hmm. and colors as well. Awesome. This is also one of the ones that we encourage for special needs children mm. because for them they need individualized uh, toys and learning aids to, yeah. to, to play with. And it also needs to be very attractive for them. Mm. So, yeah, that, yeah that's the colors that keep you concentrated. Yes, yes, yes. I, I feel like this is also for adults because yes. I really enjoyed putting that together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just don't put don't put an age limit. On yes, it. yes, yes. Yeah, we're we actually finding that like now for this, it doesn't have as much color, and mm. actually this one, <laughs> adults even like it as a DIY yes. for you know people who mm. want to do a bit of arts mm. and mm. then. Um, put up the mm. final product. That's really yes. nice. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Eventually, we'll do family portraits and yeah. everything, which will be fun for kids to do. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Yes. And game nights. And game night. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, mm. As we're winding up, mm. what um, what is your parting shot? Mm. My parting shot to entrepreneurs, mm. um, especially women entrepreneurs, is. Believe in yourself. Mm. Trust yourself. Um, we are very instinctive. And I think that is one of the gifts we are given by God, honestly. Mm -hmm. And I think we just need to be, I'm just stressing we need to believe in ourselves. Yeah. yeah. And also not to be scared to start. Just, just start. Mm. However small, um, things will work out along the way. And... It's amazing how much help also one gets as you explore your ideas. Mm. You'll talk to one person, you'll talk to the other. People also, yes, there are those who may not be so open with information about their different fields, but I've also found very many people who are open to help, mm. uh, open to share information. And uh, women, let's hold one another. Mm. Let's hold one another. Be your sister's hands. keeper. Yes. I've had so many people who have helped me mm. and who have held my hand. Mm. So I would, it's very important for us to also hold somebody else and to be conscious of it. True. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. And where should, you, when can people find you, your mm. presence on social media? Yes. Or physically yes. or a number? Yes. Uh, this is your camera. Oh, mm. hi. Uh, our water brand is Urban Waters uh, Limited. Um, we are on social media. Uh, on Instagram and Facebook mm -hmm. and uh, our main line maybe I can just say it is 0728 mm -hmm. uh, 200 300 yes mm -hmm. and also 0792 mm -hmm. uh, 200 300 yes you can reach us and uh, we'll be happy to serve you 
awesome. Yes. Thank you so much for yes, coming yes, here, yes. Lucy. Mm. Thank you for mm. sharing with us your mm. knowledge and mm. your journey. Mm. Um, we appreciate that mm. a lot. Mm. Um, and for you at home, if mm. you would like to contribute to the conversation mm. and tell us your thoughts, mm. the number is 0770-729-366. And mm. on social media at IbriTVKE on Facebook mm. and IbriTV Kenya on Instagram and mm. Twitter. Tell us what you think. Tell us where you're watching us from. We really do appreciate it. Mm. And until next week, mm. goodbye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>